I'm trying to keep my videos to less than six or seven minutes, so I decided to put the third cone question on a second video. Um, what we're doing here is we're inscribing a cylinder inside of a cone. Uh, general height capital H, uh, radius of base capital R. And we want to show that the largest cylinder that we can put in this cone would be four ninths the volume of the cone. Now everything is in, in general here. We've got uh, a cone with height capital H, radius capital R. Uh, keep in mind that the capital letters here are fixed variables and the small letters, lowercase letters, are the variables. So the variables here are the small h and the small r. And um, if I subtract the small h from the capital H, I get this this uh, distance up here. Now, I'm looking at the volume of the cylinder, which is pi r squared h, and I have to get a relationship between r and h because I need to get this in terms of one variable. What I do here is look at similar triangles. There's a small triangle at the top which is similar to a larger triangle. The ratio of height to base of that large triangle is h to r. And the ratio of height to base, or I should say half the base, is capital H minus little h over lowercase r. So it's just two ratios that are equal from similar triangles. Now, when I look at the formula up here, uh, I have to decide, am I going to replace the R or am I going to replace the H? Um, because of the setup here, when I cross multiply, the easiest thing to do is isolate the H, the small H. And that's what I did by moving this term to this side and dividing through by, by capital R. That gave me a replacement then for the small H and that's what my uh, volume formula looks like then. Now, if I multiply that out, this is, this is what I get. Uh, just bringing this into the, into the bracket. Gives me a nice, simple polynomial because uh, all of these capitals and the pi's, remember, are, are constants. When I take the derivative, it's simply a matter of bringing the 2 down, r to the 1, and same thing here, bringing the 3 down and reducing that exponent to 2. And I put that equal to 0. Uh, I also factored out the pi r. I could have factored out the capital H, but I forgot to do that at the time, but we can take care of that later. If this is going to be equal to 0, uh, pi can't be 0. r we don't want to be 0 because we're looking for the maximum uh, volume of that uh, cylinder. So the only option is that this expression in the bracket is equal to zero. So I multiplied through by uh, capital R and uh, moved my terms around and uh, isolated little r. So I've got little r in terms of the fixed capital R. Now my other job is to get the h in terms of the same thing. So I come back over here, here's my h, little h, equal to this expression, and I just substituted what I found here, remember this is a fixed number now, 2 capital R over 3, put it in for lowercase r, simplified it, um, the r's cancel, I get 2 thirds h, 2 thirds h from 1 h leaves 1 third h. So at this point I have little r and little h in terms of fixed variables, capital R and capital H. So I go back here to the volume expression for the cylinder, substitute in my substitution for little r and my substitution for little h. I'll multiply that out you see the 3 is squared times another 3, that's how I got the 27 on the bottom. And the 2 squared gives me the 4, pi r squared h. 
And if I factor out, remember we were trying to show that this volume was 4 ninths of the volume of the cone. Well, I factored out 4 ninths. And this expression right there is the expression for the volume of the cone, 1 third pi r squared h.